You are listening to the Marketing Equation Podcast with Martin Shervington. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Shervington. This is the Marketing Equation, and I'm joined today by Jonathan Sedger, who's going to be talking about video. We're going to be talking about video, marketing, strategy, what you need to be looking at, and how to make benefit from it for your business. That was just about a sentence possible. Okay. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Martin. How are you? Very good. Very good indeed. So, let's begin. Where are you? Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, in, in London. Uh, we are a startup that is a year old. I'm, my background is that I worked in a number of creative agencies, also in London, uh, for about eight years. Um, I was involved, most of the work I was involved in was business to business marketing uh, with some large global professional service firms. Uh, and everything from kind of brand work um, uh, and all co- all forms of communication um, and also a lot of video content as well. Um, but I saw that a lot of B2B businesses, even though video has been online video has been around since 2005 when YouTube put their first video on on there, it's, it's been around for over 10 years now. B2B hasn't really got to grips and is is nowhere near realizing the full potential of video and and there's a there's a number of reasons why i believe that's the case um and i kind of saw this opportunity had been wanting to found a business myself for a long time was looking for the right opportunity and 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 saw that that opportunity and we're a year in now um uh, as i'm sure you know like for most startups it's been uh, a bit of a roller coaster year but we're doing really well we've got a couple of uh, amazing clients now uh, they're they're big global uh, one of them's a big global brand um and um yeah we're we're set for some for some really good growth and i think the whole industry everything around video is is kind of exploding at the moment yeah. so it's uh, it's a really interesting area awesome so let's dive in i'm going to ask the most dumb question you could imagine and then you're going to have to make up an intelligent answer for it sure okay. it may not be as dumb as it sounds what is video now I think video now really depends on um, where it's being used. So um, I think with um, consumer brands, the way that consumer brands are using video um, is is a lot further ahead than 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 B two B marketing. And and really, I think the sort of main reason for that is that they've been they've been advertising on TV since the nineteen fifties. So they're used to video as a medium. In different guises, online video is still fairly new, but um, they get how it works. Um, in B two B marketing, it's kind of at the moment it's it's very kind of promotional focused, um, like a lot of B two B content, um, and um, it is really dry and boring. Now, you know, in B two B, it's got to be very serious in certain circumstances. Uh, but ultimately, whoever we're marketing to, um, we're not actually marketing to businesses. We're marketing to other human beings. Um, uh, and whether you're at work or whether you're in the supermarket, in Waitrose or in John Lewis, wherever you might be, um, you're, you're buying for a number of reasons, um, you know, because of needs, because of emotions. And that doesn't change when you become, uh, when, when you go into work as a business, those those triggers are still, uh, still the same. So I'm... Um, I think that's one of the sort of areas yeah. where um, B2B has got a long way to go with video. Uh, and I think also yeah. in terms of video as well, it's kind of, it's becoming entrenched in every area of our lives, in our personal lives, on social media, um, in the way that we consume video content. I mean, uh, you know, I, I now consume most of my content either on YouTube, Netflix, or now TV. I stream the majority of my content. Um, and I think that's a trend that we're going to see that's going to kind of increase um, exponentially over the next kind of 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, and I also think at the moment we're, we're just seeing the kind of the, kind of the, the infancy of, of, of online video. We had the, the digital revolution when everything became digital. Um, we're kind of at the, the mobile revolution stage. And I, I genuinely think that we'll see uh, a, a video revolution. So communications, video will become the go-to medium um, because it's a lot more humanizing. Um, the way that um, the, 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 the digital revolution has kind of changed the way that we kind of shop and we interact on social media, 
Um, and, and video is a fantastic way of humanizing digital communication because you know, if you go on somebody's website and they've just got some pictures and they've got some, um, some, some copy on there, 70% of the buying process happens online in B2B now before somebody yeah. actually speaks to a salesperson. So actually the human interaction is, is removed out of that, out of that situation. Um, but simply by kind of putting some video content of your customers, your team uh, on, onto your website, people will almost feel like they've got more of a connection with you and your team before they've actually even met you. So it's a, it's a great way to humanize digital co communication. But um, yeah, as I said, I think we've, we've only just kind of, we're only just kind of scratching the surface at the moment. Well, that's great. That's a good answer. That opens up the whole area of video. So let's now jump to what, what advice would you give for the strategic stuff to businesses? Where would they start? Because we've got lots of pieces in there. We've got the connecting, the, you know, the story, we've got the team, we've got you know, maybe the products that display. And if we just jump to a strategic level, how should they plug this into their overall marketing strategy, do you think? I think you've, you've pretty much kind of given the answer for me there. I think the most important thing to do if brands and businesses are thinking about using video, which they absolutely should be, is to really consider their marketing strategy and their wider marketing plans. And before they start creating any video content, actually work out where can video add the most value for yeah. them. Um, and you know what a lot of people do is they go oh, we need a corporate video we need to spend 50 or 60 grand on a corporate video um, but having a corporate video on its own isn't a great use no. of video really you need video to, to be sewn through the whole kind of buyer's journey um, and it could be that that actually that that fifty thousand would be better spent on creating other kinds of video content at different stages of the the buyer's journey. So, I, I, I just say that that might not necessarily be the right thing for, for some businesses. It might be that it's better off that they start off with that with that corporate video. But you know, approach it strategically, like you would any other marketing activity. Um, and, 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 and you know, I think you really need to engage with somebody who's got who's got that expertise around uh, understanding what type of content you should be creating how are you gonna how are you gonna distribute it there's a whole raft of different things that you need to consider when uh, considering a strategy and thinking about how how that video strategy will, will fit in but you've got to think about it plans. that's the point isn't it as opposed to exactly. just going right an operational level let's go and employ somebody or go and do it ourselves um, which is just you know, it's not going to work out well, is it? Let's face it. Unless you've got a really good production team in house, video is one of the things. We're, we're, well, let's just tell you, we're, we're, on a, we're on the podcast. Some people may watch this on video and, and, and see us. However, most of the time, this is sound. So what yeah. happened is I sent Jonathan off to go and get a microphone so the sound was better. And it came back. It was awesome. Video, same principle, is that if you're going to be reliant on the images, you've got to make it good, haven't you? I mean, and and you're, not just the storyline, it's actually got to be good. And I think people don't realise there's a lot of aspects to make it good. And video is complex. You know, the cuts and the fades and all of this stuff, it's a proper skill set. And unfortunately, the explosion of video, it's a bit like the explosion of, of blogging. It doesn't mean that you should do it just because you can, because you've got a laptop with a camera on it. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think All the it's, time. It's, it's, an, it's another option, but... There's, there's, there's a whole load of different things. You know, if you're, if you're a kind of um, a, a big kind of brand and you try and make your own corporate video in kind of amateur, then that's obviously going to have a really negative impact and it's going to kind of make you look a lot smaller than you actually are. Um, there's certain kinds of content that I think can be produced in-house. And, uh, and I agree. And, and I think that's then it's like, okay, so who's listening who should get there on their laptop and get started versus who should leave it for the moment and start talking to people? Um, I, I think before anybody starts creating video content, they should really kind of figure out um, how they're going to produce it and kind of at least get to a, a stage where they can get, as you said, decent sound. One of the worst things in, in any video, uh, if you've ever watched a how-to on YouTube where the, the video sounds like this, it's just so distracting. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, can't, you can't watch that content. So you need to figure out at least how you're going to kind of make it sound good. Try and get some uh, a fairly decent lighting set up. Um, but you just really need to think about what are you trying to achieve, and 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 you know actually if 
Um, the content that you're creating doesn't need to look polished. That's that's absolutely fine. I think that the one thing that I will will say about you know certain content being okay to produce yourself or produce in house is that we're so used to seeing user generated content on social media now um, that in the right context it, it can work very well. Yeah. And you know obviously having uh, being a founder of a video production company myself, that may sound like I'm being kind of uh, it may sound counterintuitive to kind of give people that advice but um but but that's that's the honest answer yeah um and um but they're not your market yeah, this, either this... are they you know you'd rather support people to do it they're not the audience that you're looking for in, in yeah terms of... and, and i think and there's, there's there's other areas like um you know sales people and social sellers then yeah. you know there's no there's no harm in you know creating um, content on on your on your iPhone and and using that because ultimately your personality is exactly. coming across. It, what you really need to think about if you're going to do that, your content's got to be brilliant. Yeah, like in any form of content that you're creating, the content's got to be uh, really great, and also you've got to be great. You've got to come across as really charismatic energy. People don't want to. It can't sit be there average. People. Can it? it can't. Absolutely. No. no. In terms you, of your delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I agree. Uh, and my advice in that area is, um, you know, try it out four or five times. Spend some time on on writing good content. Practice four or five times before you kind of go live. Yeah. Uh, and just you, you don't need to spend figure. You don't need to spend a fortune. You know, you can go onto YouTube and look up how to kind of light yourself properly. It could even just you, you know you don't even necessarily for that kind of stuff. You can you can kind of hack it. Um, but you know, I think for for brands, they need to be kind yeah. of they Bit need to polished. be using, uh, at a higher level. Yeah. So let's talk about social selling just for a second because we yeah. connected via Tim Hughes and we, we met did. in real life um, and you were doing some video for Tim. So yes. let's look at that situation. Let's look at him as an example, as an individual. Sure. How are you working with him to create video? Um, so um, so we've, we've, we've created two kinds of content for Tim. We've created uh, um, almost like a, a kind of a corporate video, if you like, an introduction to Tim and yep. what he's about and why people should be interested in him. Um, that's to live on his website. And we've also done something similar, introducing his book and why people should buy that. So that's, that's great content. Promotional content, when people have shown an interest in finding more about Tim, yeah. They, when they arrive at his website, when it's live, they will uh, go, oh, right, I get it. And obviously, they're, they're seeing him and his personality. Um, it's a lot more human. It's, uh, it's a lot more, it's, you know, rather than just a paragraph, actually seeing Tim talking passionately about what he does, um, it just puts it into a whole different league. Um, so that's great content to live on his website when people arrive there. But what we want to do is obviously get people from Tim's social media channels where he's got, hundreds of thousands of followers uh, onto his website where we can kind of, you know, give them a really seamless experience. Um, and so, so we've created some thought leadership content Essentially, uh, what we did, we transformed two really successful blog posts that he's created um, and has had a lot of success with in the past, but they were uh, in uh, in copy. Now we've created them as kind of like a, a, an inter thought leadership interview. Um, we, we've shot them and um, they are going to live on his website. Um, and then we've created um, some 30-second some um, some 30 second snippets of those longer videos, which we're then going to distribute on social media. So people get a little taste for what that, that thought of sheet leadership content's about to watch the full content. They then click on a link and go to the website. Yeah. Uh, uh, and when you get people to, to visit your site, you can then kind of track uh, how. Uh, much of the video content, there's opportunities to, uh, to, to get them to, to offer call to actions and, and all of these things, which whatever we're doing in terms of social selling, what we want to try and do is, is, is convert and get people to take some kind of action. Um, and that's much easier to do on your own website than it is on a social media yeah. channel. Yeah. Um, 
and that's one thing I said. I mean, I think YouTube is um, is brilliant. I spend a lot of time on there, um, and a lot of the really successful YouTubers um, in all kinds of different genres they're really inspirational for me. And, and actually, I, I say to sort of people I'm with. Um, so so yeah, I, I look at these. Um, I look at successful YouTube stars for inspiration and ask my um, clients and colleagues to to look at them for inspiration. And, and, you know, what I say to clients is that they shouldn't necessarily be looking at their competitors, even if they're doing a better job with video than uh, than them. That's not necessarily the best place to get inspiration because nobody in, in B2B is really killing it with video. No, no, there's some, just, actually, there's yeah. some who are doing a pretty good job, but yeah. nobody's... The people who are doing amazingly with video are people like PewDiePie. Yeah. Uh, I know that sounds mad, but this guy's got, you know, he's got... 50 or 60 million people following him and watching his content. You know, he's more popular than a lot of broadcasting channels are. Um, so, uh, and one of the reasons that these guys are uh, so successful is because they're they're educating and entertaining people, and that's what that's the kind of content people want to watch. Um, so, um, but but YouTube is a fantastic place. I think if you're somebody who wants to grow. A kind of uh, an entertainment audience that's got wide appeal to a lot of people, or you're a consumer brand that wants to build a community and and build uh, a hub of video content, then YouTube's a brilliant place. I'd advise any business that's that's um, got video content to be on YouTube. But the main thing is to think about where do you ultimately want to uh, send um, your social media followers when they're viewing your content? Where's where's the hub? Where do you want your videos to live? Um, and, and YouTube is a, is a search engine in its own right. It's the second yeah, largest search right, engine yeah, yeah. To, right. to Google. Um, yeah. But it's it's ultimately... There's so many distractions on YouTube. There's other people's content being served up. There's adverts. There's all kinds of stuff. The, the, the best place for your video content, especially if you're a B2B brand, is for your video content to live on your website. Uh, yeah, because ultimately, yeah. exactly, exactly. And there's, there's loads of, of great ways to deliver a kind of a, a, a YouTube level experience in terms of the way that your content is served up, but to do that on your own website. Um, so again, uh, fitting it back into the overall strategy, which is you want people to visit, you want people to engage within the site, to fill in a form, to contact exactly. you, etc. So it's so all part uh, and of that. that's and that's what we're trying to do for Tim. That's yeah. we're trying to sort of make his 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 website uh, a hub of content. He's got some fantastic blog content on there, um, but I think that the video content just takes it to to a next level. Awesome. Um, yeah. Cool. You can hear I've got a slight dog growling in the background, which I can't shut up. So we'll continue <laughs> as we move into the last section, live streaming. Where are you at? Yes. Uh, so li- live streaming, I think, is, um, is, is brilliant. I think um, there's, there's lots of opportunity. I think what live streaming does, it creates urgency. Um, when you're offering up video content that's kind of on demand and people can watch it any time, there's kind of less urgency. But if you say it's it's a bit like a kind of webcast or um, or a webinar, all of these kind of things. Um, but I think where we're aiming to get to is to um, is my sound all right still? Yeah, uh, where we're aiming to get to is that that actually that you have. Um, uh, a much nicer visual experience with live streaming. So I think stuff like apps like Meerkat and Periscope are, are great for kind of consumer level uh, and also even for, for brands as well. But uh, there's an opportunity to take it to uh, a next level uh, by by offering, you know, for, for bigger brands who've got the budgets, streamed live uh live video content that's at that sort of high broadcast kind of quality level and i think actually if you are one of these big technology companies and you've got an amazing event happening and you've got global industry thought leaders uh having like a fireside chat there why not broadcast that i mean you can obviously use that content on demand afterwards um but you know i think webinars are valuable but I think there's a better way to do it, and I think that's what we'll see, and it's something that we're pushing is to, to kind of give that same kind of information 
but in a much more kind of visually enjoyable way uh, of presenting it. Perfect. Um, and engaging it's, it's, the community and getting the, getting people involved and part of it, isn't it? Absolutely. Good. Where can everyone find you, Jonathan? Uh, you can find me at Jonathan Sedger on Twitter. Uh, you can visit our website, www.whitecollarvideos.com. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as well and always open to, to speaking to new people. If people want to collaborate, if they want some kind of advice, then, you know, I'm, I'm always open to, to speaking to people. So give people a shout out for your email address as well then. Uh, yeah, it's it's Jonathan dot sorry, it's just Jonathan at whitecollarvideos dot com. Right, and I'm going to spell Jonathan just because. Yeah. <laughs> J o n a t h a n. J o n a t h a n. There you go. Just just to cover all bases, Jonathan. Thank you so much, and thanks everyone for listening. That was the marketing equation talking today about video. Cheers, Jonathan. Catch you again. Super. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Equation Podcast. Brought to you by PlusYourBusiness.com and Effective.fm.